Hello everybody, welcome to KJB Believers, and today we're going to do, be doing a podcast here. Now, I don't know uh, if you guys know this, but, you know, previously we, we just finished recording, and, you know, the audio was bad, and stuff was messing up, and and looks like we were talking about something that the devil does not want to be uh, want mentioned in the internet, and that's what we're going to mention today in this podcast. And we're going to be talking about the Trinity. And previously, as I said, we tried to record it, but when we were talking about it, stuff was messing up in the audio. And you know what? To the uh, glory be to God, because that just goes to show that we're sending something out here that the devil does not want out. Amen. Amen. And we're going to be talking about the Trinity, the Trinity here, uh, brother. You got any uh, any t- any something to add on on the, on the Trinity? Or what you think of? No, right. it's uh, very important. We had a great uh, a great podcast in vain before this, but Lord Amen. willing, uh, you'll get into this, and hopefully, everybody can get a blessing from this uh, Amen. upcoming podcast here. Amen. So yeah, we're going to be talking about the Trinity, and of course, the Trinity is obviously seen in the Bible. We're going to see here in First John. Let's turn our Bibles to First John. Chapter 5, verse 7. The Bible says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are what? One. You see that? It is that simple. We're not saying that there's three gods. Amen. We're not saying that whatsoever. What we're saying is, is that there are three individuals, amen, three persons, but, amen. but guess, oh, sorry, hiccups, Whew. but they're one, amen, and I want you to notice here that in the Bible, the word is mentioned here, well, what is the word? The word is found in John 1.1, 1, 1, according to the Bible, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was was God. You see that? It's God. The Word is God, the Father is God, and of course the Holy Spirit is God. And the Word was made flesh. God himself was made the flesh. The Word was made flesh. That's what the Bible says in John 1.14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You see that? Uh, do you got something to add about this, brother? First uh, John five seven is probably the I'd say the greatest verse on the Trinity. It's also the most heavily attacked verse in all the Bibles, um, which of course goes hand in hand. Satan's versions are going to go after the verse that promotes the Trinity. Um, it's a beautiful verse, and even you know Schofield, who is a, a good Bible believer, you know kind of came. Yeah, he was before set the foundation. Um, even in him and his his marginal notes, he actually attacks the verse and yeah. says some foolishness about it. So. This is by far, I'd say, one of the greatest verses on the Trinity, along with John one one. Man, I mean, yeah, it's you can't, simple, it's clear, it's so it's simple. Best. It's right there, and even with Schofield, you know, I love Brother Schofield, but when he's wrong, he's wrong. Amen. Amen. And this is one of the cases where he's just dead wrong. He went against the book, and the book chewed him up. Amen. And it's the same cl- case with any of us. If any of us go against the book, we're gonna get chewed up, right? And that's just the way how the Word of God rolls and goes. Amen. So we see here that the Word was made flesh. All right, that's the Lord Jesus. We can see Jesus. Well, they saw Jesus, and they beheld His glory. Amen. Now, one thing we need to understand, right, is that uh, we as people cannot grasp the eternality of God. Amen. That's what we need to understand. We as people cannot grasp the eternality of God because... In order for us to understand God, he's going to have not to not be God, basically, if that makes any sense. Because we humans are limited in our understanding. And one thing we need to realize, according to the Bible, is that the Holy Ghost, the Son, and the Father are three distinct persons. Amen? That's what we need to understand. There are three distinct persons person the holy ghost is a specific person the father is a person and jesus is a person we're going to see the verses on that all right this is the trinity here another word for the trinity you can use is the godhead right and you know again it's all semantics but we're talking about the very being of god is three persons in one amen three persons in one we're going to see that here in the holy ghost 
the Holy Ghost, though the word person is not used with the Holy Ghost, you can still see that he is his own individual, distinct from Jesus and distinct from the Father. Okay, let's turn in our Bible here to John, John 16. John 16, verse 7, verses 7 to 14, Jesus is speaking. Notice what he says. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. You see that? I, being Jesus, will send him, the Holy Ghost, unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove of the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. So notice, even the Father is distinct from the Son. Verse 11, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he... Who's the he? The spirit of truth is come. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine. And shall shew it unto you. So notice what the Bible says. The Bible says that first of all, the spirit of truth. He has come and he will not speak of himself. So Jesus, himself, a person, right? That's right, himself. He's a person, individual. This cannot be denied, because if Jesus is the per, is uh, if Jesus is the Spirit, right? Then basically he's saying that the Spirit is 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 uh, not going to speak on Jesus, but he is going to speak on Jesus. He's going to glorify me. That's what he said in verse fourteen. He's going to glorify Jesus, and this is also one of the key ways of knowing. If what you're receiving is of the Holy Ghost, if it's glorifying Jesus, and it is, if it's glorifying the Holy Ghost, then no, there's many people out there who are Pentecostal to an extent that go, oh, the Holy Ghost, he told me of his glory and his wonder. I'm like, no, the Holy Ghost has come here to show you of Jesus. Amen. He's not going to talk about, the Holy Ghost is not going to talk about himself. Amen. He's going right. to talk about Christ. Amen. That's, that's who he's going to talk about. And let's get this out of the way. All right, so. That's who he's going to glorify. And we see here that the Father is his own distinct individual, and the Son is his own distinct individual, and the Holy Ghost is his own distinct individual. They're not the same. However, the Bible clearly said in 1 John 5.13 that they are one. They are God. Right? That's what they are. They're each dis uh, specific persons, but they're all one. Amen? Uh, Amen. Do you got something to say about that, brother? No, it's it's perfect. They're perfectly right clear, there. right? You know, and, and people will try to debate on this all they want, but you can't because this is what the Bible said. You can try to pull mental gymnastic and make your heresy sound real good, but you can't get away from the book. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's see here in Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter one, we're going to uh, talk about now the per the person of the Father, the person of the Father. All right. Notice what the Bible says in Hebrews one one. God. Now, now I have this uh, old teacher uh, in, in, in my church. Uh, they have this their own little institute, and some of our church members see it. And this teacher said this one time when he was going through Hebrews. He said this. He said, now, people try to wonder who wrote the book of Hebrews. Now, if you go to the very first verse or the very first chapter, what do you see? You see God. So who wrote the book of Hebrews? God. <laughs> That's cool. Amen. I like that. I like it. That's cool. That's real good. So, God, right, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. So, even in verse 1, uh, verse one it says, God who at sundry times, dispensationalism, basically. If you want to understand dispensationalism, that's Hebrews 1.1 1, 1 for you. God, in different ways, different times. Sundry, uh, sundry times and in diverse manners. Amen. Amen. Verse 3. Who, being the brightness of his glory, and the express image of his person. Previous verse was talking about the sun. The sun, in the context, is the who. Who, being the brightness of his glory, 
and the express image of his person. So the person of God. Who, who is the image of God according to the Bible? This is an easy one. Christ. Jesus Christ. Christ is the image of God. Amen. And that's what we need to understand. And because he's the image of God, he is the image of his person. The person of God. So guess what? God the Father is his own individual person. Amen. And upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had him by himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So we see here that Jesus is the image of his person. We're going to talk about that also in a bit. So yeah, uh, you got something to add about this, brother? No? Not at all. Clear, Express right? Express image. Express image of his person. Is, is that clear? Is yeah. that clear? Amen. We see here that Jesus is also a person. So not only is God the Father a person, not only is the Holy Ghost a person, but Jesus is also a person. And I also want to bring this into mind here, that just because it says Jesus is a person, that doesn't mean that that's it. Amen. God the Father is a person also, and the Holy Ghost is a person also. People have this mentality nowadays that uh, they see where it reads, uh, where Jesus said he is the Son of God, right? And they say, oh, you see, it's the Son of God. So he can't be God. Bing! He can get rid of all the verses that talk about Jesus being God, amen? And you can't do that. you got to acknowledge it too. Yes, it does say Jesus is the Son of God, but guess what? Bing! Jesus is also God. And we're going to cover that also. And we're going to cover that also, but I want to address that mindset because that's a dishonest mindset, amen? Very dishonest. Amen. All right? So Jesus is a person also. We're going to cover that here in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. The Bible says, this is Paul speaking, To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For if I forgave anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. So guess what? Christ is a person. Amen? We got the Father being a person, the Son being a person, and the Holy Spirit personified as the Comforter. He's an individual also. You see that? And, and one thing we need to understand, most importantly, is that Christ is the image of God. We covered that in Hebrews 1, verses 1 to 3. He is the express image of his person. And Christ, because of that, he is the image of God. And God is his own person, God the Father. All right. I got a good, good verse for that real quick, brother. Go ahead, go ahead, brother. The image. Good cross-reference here in Colossians yeah. 1. Verse 15, it says this, Who is the image of the invisible God, mm. the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him, that's Jesus Christ, and for him. And he, he is, is before, before all, all things, things, and by him all things consist. Amen. That's that image, brother, that image. Amen. He is the image of the invisible God. And guess what? He is the first one born in that image. Amen. Because Amen. the Bible says he is the firstborn of every creature. When the Bible says firstborn, that doesn't necessarily mean that he was created as a God or, or a person of the God. No. He is the firstborn into this world and as what? In the image of God. And we're going to cover that also. We're going to cover that also. And that's one of the things that, you know, is good to know. Because Jesus Christ is the image of of God and why is it important to know this why is it important to know that Jesus is the image of God well first of all one thing you need to realize is that in reality no one has seen God the Father God the Bible says God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth but Jesus also said when he resurrected he said handle me for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as you see me have people say oh you see so Jesus wasn't God he's not a spirit wait a second now wait a second we're gonna read here you see, it's like some people only read one portion and pew, that's all they do. Pew, get rid of, get rid of everything else. You know, right. and that's just major dishonesty. Major dishonesty. You got to look at the whole counsel of the matter. Amen. So yeah, it's, it is true. God is a spirit and no one has seen God the Father. No man has seen him, right? No man has. And John 1, John 1.18 the Bible says, No man have seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So notice, no man has seen God. But guess what? Guess who has declared him? The Son. 
You see that? The Son hath declared him. If you want to see the Father, you're going to have to see the Son. Now, the Son is not the Father, and the Father is not the Son, but guess what? If you want to see the Father, you see the Son. Why? Because the Bible just said that Christ is the image of God. You see that? A good example. I'll give you a good example of that. So, you see me right now, brother? Mm, I think so. You think so? Yeah. Do you see me? Yes or no? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see me. Well, no, you don't. But you mm. see me. But you don't. Why, why do I say no? Because you want to know what? You're not actually looking at me. You're looking at a screen. Right. You're looking at a screen of an image of me, but you're not seeing me. But guess what? If you're seeing the screen, you're seeing me. <laughs> you see that? It's the same concept if we're looking at each other. Even, let's say, a step further. Let's say we meet in person, man, and we see each other face to face. I'll ask you, brother, do you see me? Obviously, you'll say, well, yeah. yeah. You're right. Well, even then, no. Want to know why? Because you're looking at my body. You're not looking yeah. at my soul. You've never seen my soul a day in your life. No man has seen God at any time. But guess what? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. As Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. No man has seen Pharaoh at any time. But if you've seen my body, you've seen me. <laughs> Ain't that something? It's like, whoa, it's like work, man. But guess what? That's how God's mind works. The Bible says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. Though as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. You can't, with a God like that, you know, it's like, and that's an eternal mind right there, man. Amen. It's not possible. But even then, you know, the Bible says no man has seen God at any time. Right? But guess what? If you've seen Jesus, you've seen God. Why? Jesus is the express image of his person, the person of God. Jesus, the person, is the image of the person of God. Ain't that something? Praise Amen. the Lord for that. And John chapter 14, verse 8 through 11, the Bible says, Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. And Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. How sayest thou then, shew us the Father? You see that? Why? Because Christ is the image of God, as the Bible said. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? And the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. You see that? He's claiming to be God. Even though there are two distinct persons, he's saying we're God, basically. And I you know, and I can go into the whole terminology and I'm probably gonna get it wrong because again we're talking about eternal matters here. Eternal we're trying to understand God himself, right? And if you right. try to understand one hundred percent God himself, you're gonna fall into some error. That's what's gonna happen. Because it's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's called the mist. It's one of the mysteries of Paul. It's called the mystery of godliness. We're going to cover that also in a bit. So we see that though they see Jesus, they've seen the Father. They've seen God. All right. Now, we see an example of this. What if I told you, right? What if I told you that the Lord Jesus Christ got into a wrestling match, WWE style, off the top of the rope? Amen. Mm. Now I know some people are going to be in the comment. Hear about it. Now some people are going to be in the comment section going, "Oh, that's heresy! That's heresy! How can you say that? Bubba? Jesus was not in WWE." I'm like, "Yes, he is. Yes, he was. He was in WWE, right? In the front page." Amen. Well, not really, but amen. but you'll see what I mean. You'll see what I mean. Amen. So let's turn to our Bibles. Let's turn to our Bibles to Genesis 32. This concept goes way far back, even to the Old Testament. Genesis 32, verse 24. And here, and of course, and here in the blue letter uh, Esword thing, we see the little title over it, and it says, Jacob wrestles with God. Here we go. Here we go now. Here we go. So we're going to start with verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled the man with him until the breaking of the day. 
And when he saw that he prevailed not against them, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God, and with men, and hast prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it that thou, uh, thou ask after my name? And he blessed him there. So notice, this being, this man, did not tell Jacob his name. All right? And we're going to see here that this was Jesus, right? In verse 30. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. For I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. But Amen. wait, I thought the Bible says no man have seen God at any time. Yes. But guess what? If you've seen Jesus, you've seen God. Amen. So guess who wrestled with him? Jesus did. Jesus got off the top rope and choke slammed him. Amen. That's what happened. Well, not really, but you know what I mean, basically. He got yeah. in a wrestling match with him, bro. And one thing you got to realize, man, is that this concept is even found in the Old Testament. This is how far the Lord takes it. And notice, he said, uh, I pray thee thy name. And he said, wherefore is it thou, that thou ask after my name? And he blessed him right there. So guess what? He just asked him, why did you ask my name? And he never tells him his name. Want to know why? Because salvation has never been the same. Well, what do you mean? Well, in the New Testament, if you're going to get saved, you're going to get saved by the name of Jesus. Amen? If you're going to get saved, you got to trust the name of Jesus, and you got to trust the blood that he shed for you to, to save you from your sins. How that Christ died for your sins, he was buried and rose again. Receiving that act that Jesus, the name of Jesus, did alone. Right? But here's the thing, though. In the Old Testament, they didn't know the name of Jesus. So how can right. salvation be the same? It's not. Because if you say it's the same, that means people today can still get saved by, without knowing the name of Jesus. you uh -huh. got to know the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. There's no other way Amen. by his name. So you see that very clearly here. He saw God face to face. So now it makes perfect sense. No, no one has seen the Father, but guess what? They have seen the Father through the Son. Right. It is that simple. You got something to add to that, brother? Yeah, what's really interesting is if you look throughout the Old Testament, a great study that maybe one day we'll do yeah. is on the angel of the Lord, right? Mm. And the angel of the Lord is pre-incarnate Christ. Amen. What's interesting there is he asks when he says, Wherefore is it that thou dost ask after my name? In Judges chapter 13, Manoah actually asks yep. the same question to the angel of the Lord, and the same response happens from Jesus Christ. It is a secret. Says, Why askest thou thus after my name? That's in Judges chapter 13. Yeah, he says it so is a secret, right? Yeah. Right, exactly. So it's it's a, this constant theme throughout the Bible with the angel of the Lord, with Jesus Christ. Uh, it's it's so beautiful yeah. that you can look through. Well, I don't know why yeah, Jesus definitely. said it was a secret. Because he even believed that salvation has never been the same. That's why. Amen. You know, because yeah, in order absolutely. for you to get saved today, you got to believe in the name of Jesus. That's one of the prerequisites. Amen. Right, and amen. if you don't got that in the Old Testament, you're not saved the same way. It's under a different way. Right? Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, God who had sundry times and in diverse manners, amen, diverse manners right. spake in time past, told people different things at different times. What did he tell you today? He told you, you and me today to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, amen. That's amen. simple, how Christ died for our sins. All right, so we see that, that he saw God face to face, amen. And for some people, that's hard to understand. How can they see God face to face? But Jacob saw him. And the Bible says he did. All right. Now we're going to talk about here uh, one of, uh, one of the one of the things on the Trinity is the natures of Christ. The natures of Christ. You see, Christ had two natures. He had a divine nature and he had a human nature. What most people try to do, what I noticed, is that they see the verses for the human nature and say, Ah, you see? Jesus had a new human nature, so he can't be God. Pew! And get rid of all the verses to talk about the divine nature. I say, and of course Brother Zachary says, Hey, you know what? Yes, it's true. Jesus had a human nature. But guess what? Don't get rid of the other verses that say he had a godly nature too. A divine nature. Right. You can't do that. You got to 
bring them together. You know, it's and here's the thing. Uh, the problem arises with this kind of mentality where, like, you see a truth in the Bible, right? And if something complements it, they get rid of it. And you just can't do that. Like, for example, the Bible says the, the, the word of God is a sword, but it also says the word of God is a hammer, right? So some people are like, no, the word of God is a sword. It's not a hammer. I'm like, no, 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 no. Because I remember there was some preacher out there who I saw. He's like, the word of God is a sword. You got to, you can't hammer. You can't use it as a hammer. Amen. I'm like, yes, you can. Yes, you can. It depending on the circumstance. Yes, you can. You know, because that's what the Bible says. But you see, people, they see a truth and just ignore the rest. You can't do that. You got to see the whole counsel of God and rightly divide when needed. Amen. It's that simple. And it's the same concept with the divine nature and human nature. The divine nature is not the human nature, and the human nature is not the divine nature. Amen? They're both distinct, but it, they both belong to Jesus. Amen? Jesus was 100% God and 100% man. We're going to talk about the divine nature here. Amen? The divine Amen. nature. Uh, you got something to say about that, brother? About the divine nature? I do. I, I would say, for me, the, the verse that just blows all these other, you know, mm -hmm. these, these wicked people out of, out of the water. Is I, Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. I'll read it real quickly. Yeah. It says this, For unto us a child is born. This is, of course, prophecy. It says, Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Mm -hmm. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be Wonderful Counselor. The, the Mighty God. God the Everlasting, everlasting Father. Father. The Prince, of, the Prince Peace. of Peace. You see, that is one of the names that he will be called. He will be called those names. Right? And and we also got to be careful a bit because some people use this as a proof text to say, Oh, you see, Jesus is the Everlasting Father. No, no, no. That's just one of the names he will be called. Right. You see that? And one of the names is the Almighty God. Amen? Because he is God. In another verse, it says that he is God. So praise yes. the Lord for that, you know? And it cannot be denied. You cannot separate. You cannot separate this. And that's one of the things you can't separate. Jesus is God. Amen? Amen. That cannot be denied. And there's tons of people who say Jesus is not God. Another proof text uh, for that is in, uh, let's see here, in Acts, in Acts 20, Acts 20, 28, right? The Bible says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased, which his own blood, with his own blood. So guess who purchased uh, the church with his blood? God. You see that in the verse? God Amen. purchased it. So guess what? Jesus is God. Amen? Amen. Jesus is God. That's what the Bible says. It complements it in other passages also. John 10. John 10. And look at verse... 30, the Bible says, Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Verse 31, then the Jews took up stones again to stone him, and Jesus answered them. He said, many good works have I shewed you from my Father, for which of those works he stoned me? And the Jews answered him, saying, for a good work we stone thee not, for, but for blasphemy, because that, because that thou being a man, makest thyself God. You see that? He was claiming to be God here when he said, I and my Father are one. They're one and the same. Jesus, even previously we read where Jesus said, the Father in me and I in him, right? The Father's in me and I am him. He's claiming deity at this point. Amen? That's what Jesus is doing. And it's like, what? You know, and, you know, but guess what? It's just what the Bible says. Amen? You just got to believe the Bible. And another proof text here is in Matthew chapter 4. The temptation of Jesus. Now, before we start reading this, I want you to pay close attention. To verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Now, brother, who's being tempted of the devil here? Jesus Christ. Ah, that's the context. That's what it said, right? So, according to the context, the person being tempted here is Jesus. Amen. we got to stick to that. Because this is going to reveal something when we keep reading. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights and was afterward in hunger, 
And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, I want to stop here real quick. This is uh, sort of funny here. Uh, whenever my pastor is done preaching or whenever the sermon's done at Sunday and and we stop by, I guess, something to eat, we stop by sometimes Longhorn or something like that. And and they give us the bread, right? And pastor's wife, Miss Jones, she starts cutting up the bread and stuff. And I say, Pastor, don't eat yet. If you eat that bread right now as it is, you're going to be sinning. He said, what? What you mean, boy? You know, I'm like, yeah, listen, because the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone. So make sure to put some butter on that bad boy. Amen. Put some butter on it so we don't sin. <laughs> you know, eat it with something else. Amen. You know, and that's just a little joke I have there. But, you know, it, and the Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And, you know, he knows I'm joking when I say that. I'm not, I mean. Yes, technically I'm taking out of its context when I say that, but he knows I'm joking. It's obviously a joke. And the reason right. I'm clarifying is because chances are someone in the comment section will be pissed off about it. You know, it is what it is. So, verse 5. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and setteth him up on the pinnacle of the temple, and saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Wait a second. Who was the devil tempting again? According Jesus to verse Christ. 1? Jesus! The devil was tempting Jesus. And who is uh, Jesus saying, Who is the devil tempting here? God. Jesus Amen. is claiming to be God here because the devil is tempting him. Hmm. Ain't that something? And it's right there in front of your nose, and most people don't catch it. Amen. Hmm. Yeah. Ain't that something? All right, then another proof text here we're going to take a look at is in Hebrews 1. We previously read uh, Hebrews 1, verses 1 till 3. So we're going to go down here to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4. Talking about Jesus here, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be unto me the son. So notice now, so basically here in verse 5, the father is, is saying, who, when has he told the angels that he is the capital S son? You know, And of course, this is a proof text that some people use to say that, oh, you see, uh, God is not going to call uh, the sons of, uh, the angels the sons of God and so forth. But that's not what it's saying. It's the capital S son he's talking about here. Amen? Not the lowercase S son. So I just want to mention that because I know there's going to be a goofball there. So either way. You know, and I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world. Uh-oh. Remember that passage you just quoted in Colossians? What was it, uh, brother? Colossians 1, 1? Yep. 1, 15 through 18. 1, 15 through 18? 15 through 18. 15 through 18. Yeah, you know, where he is the first begotten, right? But mm -hmm. guess what? Into the world. Not in right. eternity. Not, not, not his very being, no. Physically, into the world. He is the first one who was born in the image of God into this world, compared with the other verse uh, the brother just quoted. And he saith, let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son he saith, notice the Father is saying to the Son now, unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. You see that? Amen. Praise the Lord. Right there. Right there, man. God called the Son God. So why should I believe some, some apostate out there said, Jesus never claimed to be God? Why should I believe you? I, I, I believe God better than you. Why should I believe you? I believe God. He said that he called Jesus the uh, oh God. Okay, the Son of God. Okay, then Jesus is God. Why should I believe you? I believe the Bible. Amen. The Bible is the truth. You see that? Praise the Lord. 
In 1 Timothy, God was manifest in the flesh. And we're going to see why so many people have, have trouble. Have trouble with this doctrine. 1 Timothy 3.16, the Bible says, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. What is the mystery of godliness? God was manifest in the flesh. Mm, you see that? Justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up to glory. You see that? Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. You see, that's why so many people have have a tough time with it. Why? Because it's a mystery. Mystery. It's hard to understand. You can't grasp it 100%. You just got to take it by faith. Why? Because it's a mystery. That's why so many people have trouble with this. You got something to add about this, brother? No. I mean, once again, don't, don't think that you are going to be able to search out everything that God understands. You do that, you get into, you know, Calvinism, wicked mm. philosophy, and you get into heresy. If you think that you can comprehend everything in this Bible, that makes God not a God. There's going to be things we're never going to know about God's personality and his character, and you just have to accept that as a human being. Until we get up to heaven, we, you know, we have full knowledge and things. But there's certain mysteries, things, I mean, we can know about them. But, I mean, to think that Jesus Christ was in the manger, he was crying like there, and he relied on Mary and Joseph to provide for him. That's a mystery. Mm. That's, we can't comprehend that. To think that God was, you know, all the way up there in eternity and has always existed. We can't comprehend that. So there's certain things that we're not going to be able to comprehend. So, yeah, leave it at that. Amen. I'm glad you mentioned that, you know, where... Imagine how Jesus was a baby and, they, and Joseph had to teach it to walk and to talk and stuff. All that stuff. You know what that has to do with? That portion has to do with what we're, we're going to talk about right now. The humanity. The the huma hu human nature of God. The human nature of Jesus. My bad. The human nature of Jesus. The third, uh, the third person of the Godhead. Jesus. Amen. Jesus had a human nature, as you just stated. He had to learn all that stuff, amen? In Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, verse 40. And a lot of people, as I said, they run to these verses where it talks about the human nature of, of Jesus. They say, you see, Jesus was a human. He couldn't have been God. Yes, it's true. He had a human nature. But you can't ignore the deity side of it either. You can't, you can't just do this, you know, get rid of it. No, you got to bring it together also. They're both true. How can you say one is a lie and one is it? You've been chirping at this point. They're both true. Amen. They're both true. Let's see here in Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 40. The Bible says, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. So notice he had to grow. And he had to wax strong in spirit. Do you think God has to wax strong in spirit? No. But guess what? Jesus, in his human nature, he had to. He limited himself, amen, in his human nature. All right, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13 to 15. The Bible says, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him by with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest, that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So notice, he was tempted. The same temptations you and I go through, the same struggle he went through. The only difference was is that he was without sin. Without sin. He did not sin, not once. That's why the Bible says, Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help in time of need. So notice, he suffered the same temptation, so he's there to help you. He understands. Jesus understands the struggles you're going through, because he went through those same struggles, the temptations and everything, though he was yet without sin. Amen. And Romans chapter 5, verse 8. I'm sorry, no. I said, I said Romans, I meant Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 5, it's a good but, verse but Romans not, chapter 5, verse 8, amen. Let me, let me turn there real quick. Romans 5, 8, yeah, amen. But God but committed his love towards us. us. And that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Still a good verse amen. to go to. So Hebrews All 5, 8, good, brother. amen. All of it is good. Praise the Lord for that. Hebrews 5, 8. The Bible says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Are you telling me God can, can learn obedience? 
Well, Jesus is God, and this human side, he learned obedience. Yes. You see that? People were like, no, God can't learn. God knows everything. Yes, it's true. God does know everything. But Jesus, when he was incarnate, he limited himself. He had a human nature. He had to learn obedience. So that means he grew up, and that's one of the mysteries, of the mystery of godliness. You also pointed out how imagine that he had to grow up, and his father had to teach him to do chores. He had chores. He had to teach him to, to, to have table manners. Well, I don't know if they had table manners. I don't know. But either way, you know, he had to teach him all this stuff, right? He's God. He's supposed to know everything. But no, he, was, he had to learn obedience. He had to uh, wax. Isn't that in Philippians 2? Isn't that, uh, there's a verse in Philippians that's really good about that. Where? Let me find it. Philippians chapter 2. Mm hmm. Go there real quick. Yep. Philippians 2, verse 6 and 7. It says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, yep. but made himself of no reputation, and took upon mm. him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being, and being found, found in, in fashion, fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Amen. Amen. So yeah, crazy brother. That's his human nature. He had to. He had to make himself of no reputation and so forth. That's what he had to do. In Hebrews chapter two, verse nine to eighteen. The Bible says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels. For the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things, by whom are all, th uh, by whom are all things, and bringing many sons into glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. So notice, he even calls me brother. Amen. Amen. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren, in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again I will put my trust in him, and again behold, I and the children which God hath given me. For as much, then, as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through, the, through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage for verily he took he took not on him the nature of angels but he took on him the seed of abraham wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to god to make reconciliation for the sins of the people for in that he himself suffered being tempted he is able to succor them that are tempted. You see, his new human nature, he had to take the form of a man, as uh, Philippians said. He suffered. He learned obedience. He, he had to wax strong in spirit. He had to grow. And that is part of the mystery of godliness. But that is the human nature of Christ. Christ is, was both 100% man, 100% God. Both are true. Amen. And you can't say that one is not true just because the other is true. And that's the mentality people have nowadays. They read a verse, as I said, they read a verse like where the Bible says the word is a sword. And then another verse where it says the word is a hammer. They ignore the where the Bible says the verse is a hammer. Oh, it's just a sword. You know? Right. It's, it's this mentality nowadays. It's called lazy mentality. Lazy is what it is. All we want is a th three second clip and that's it. And you can't have that with the Bible. God is not going to let you have that. You got something to add about that, brother? No, that's that sounds. You hit all the points. Amen. Good stuff. It's really that simple. It's really the Trinity or the Godhead, whatever you want to call it, the semantics. It's really that simple. And people get messed up when they cherry pick, start cherry picking, or not only cherry picking, but they choose bits and portions from good Bible teachers and make a whole doctrine out of a small little portion. A good right. example is when Dr. Ruckman was teaching on the Trinity, he sometimes would say, oh, three parts, you know, your three parts, your body, soul, and spirit. Jesus was, uh, God is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. There are three parts also. And people say, ah, oh, you see? Three parts. So, so it's not persons, it's parts. And I'm like, dude, you got to see the whole teaching, man. He was just comparing it to us because we're three parts. We're not three distinct persons, but the type is there. Amen. The type is there. He was just talking about the type. But of course, if you look at the other teachings, he talks about being three distinct persons. Amen. I remember right. one time, uh, Brother Breaker, he did a video where he talked about the image of God or something like that. And he mentioned there are three distinct parts like Doc did. 
And then people in the comment section started flooding Brother Breaker saying, Oh, Brother Breaker, you know, you're heretic because you're saying they're parts and not persons. And then Brother Breaker had to upload another video where he talks about that they're persons. And he had to to he had to he say, Hey, you know, you, you guys are not seeing the whole picture. Right? You guys are not seeing the whole picture whatsoever. You got to look at the whole Bible. Amen? It's not possible, even for this little podcast, it's not possible for us to cover everything on the, on the Trinity. We could spend here five hours and redo this podcast if it goes bad. Praise the, the let's hope let's hope that it doesn't go bad now because previously the yeah. previous podcast went bad. But we could do this over and over again and go fifty hours, twenty four seven, going through this thing, and we still won't cover all of it. You got to do your own Bible study on it. Christ on, is the image of God, and Christ is part of the Godhead, which is in three persons: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are. One. Amen. I'll close with this, brother. I'll close Amen. with this. Just because I, for the people that, you know, might not believe that, are you going to deal with, obviously a lot of our viewers will deal with Jehovah's yeah. Witnesses or Arians. You understand that, you know, Thomas and, and John, what, what does he say in John 20? I'm going to read a couple verses. Yeah, go ahead, brother. He calls Jesus, my Lord and my God. Mm. Thomas calls that, does, does Christ correct him? No. No, sir. Christ allows that worship to happen. Allows it. Acts. Acts 7 is Stephen is dying. He, after he, gives, he gives a great address. You know what Stephen says as before he dies? He says, calling upon God, he's calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He's talking to God, but it's the Lord Jesus Christ over there. So I'm gonna, I'll am gonna close with this. In Revelation 19, you read one of the great accounts of everybody yeah. worshiping Jesus, Lord of Lords. If you worship Jesus Christ and he's not God, you're committing idolatry. Mm. So I'll tell you this right now. You're not committing idolatry because Jesus Christ is the image of God. He is Amen. God three in one. But if you if you if you don't believe that, you better not worship Jesus Christ. And you better look at these men as idolaters for what they are. And everybody else that's gonna be in heaven right. worshiping Jesus are gonna be idolaters. So your theology comes from the pits of hell if you believe that. But praise the Lord for the Trinity. It's probably one of the most beautiful doctrines in the Bible, brother. And it's one of the most attacked doctrines by the new Bibles, yeah. by the wicked witnesses, and even Bible believing brethren that are getting messed up. Yeah. You know, letting right. Satan just corrupt them. It's 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 crazy, brother. Yep. You're absolutely right, brother. And it's it's taking us as a storm and it and it's been happening this whole fight's been happening ever since uh, the church started at the cross, you know. Right. So this this has been happening ever since then. So yeah, my friends, uh this is KJB Believers here. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. And this is Brother Zachary, and of course I'm Brother Faber, and of course the name of the channel is KJB Believers. It's plural, if you notice, that's what that's why, because I want to have other people here also, not just me. Amen. Because you all Bible believers are great blessings to me. Amen. Great blessings. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. I'll see you guys later. Bye.